Hi guys, the Middle Maniac back again, and in this video, I'm going to be listing off my top 10 favorite horror films from the 2000s. Um, but yeah, so, let's begin. At number 10 is Always Watching, A Marble Hornet Story. Um, yeah, this is the good Slender Man film, not that stupid, crappy one from, I was last year or the year before. But yeah, this one's a good one. Um, this movie was spawned from the uh, YouTube series. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a really, really good film. Um, still has the uh, found footage kind of style like the YouTube videos had. Um, but yeah, so number 10. Alright, at number 9 is uh, The 13th Child Legend of the Jersey Devil. This one is sort of a low-budget film, but it's still really, really good. And yes, it, the, it doesn't use the actual Legend of the Jersey Devil. They just make some, some bullshit stuff up uh, of their own thing. And yeah, well, that's really disappointing, considering it's a, uh, the mo a movie of, about the Jersey Devil. The movie itself was actually still pretty good as a horror film. Um, the special effects for... Like, the creature effects are actually really good. Um, not... Not... Fantastic, but yeah, I mean, still really good to the point where they're um, so, uh, believable enough. Um, still pretty impressive looking. Um, the acting is really good. Um, but yeah, just a really, really great horror film. But yeah, that's at number nine. All right, at number eight is Beneath Loch Ness. Another sort of eh, this is not really a found footage horror film but it does have a little bit of elements in one scene. But, uh, yeah, this is sort of a, a horror film, uh, kind of in the mockumentary style, where, like, it's a, a documentary, a fake documentary. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's really good. It's basically about uh, this uh, 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 documentary-making crew going out trying to uh, uh, find the Loch Ness Monster. And, of course, things go horribly, horribly wrong. Um... But yeah, just a really, really, really good film. One of the very few Loch Ness Monster-related horror films out there, which uh, uh, is kind of disappointing, because there should be more. Loch Ness Monster is such a really cool sort of mythical creature that you would think there would be more horror films about it. But no, usually if you find a Loch Ness Monster horror... Uh, sorry, a Loch Ness Monster movie, it's usually uh, either uh, a kid's film or just a really, uh, really sort of meh, a really meh uh, fantasy adventure film. But uh, um... If you dig deep enough, you'll find a, a few really good lo uh, Loch Ness Monster movies that are uh, horror films. But yeah, awesome. Set number eight. At number seven is another Loch Ness Monster related horror film, and that is Beneath Loch Ness. Um, yeah, well, the effect, well, the, the CGI isn't that good compared to nowadays. I mean, but, I mean, it's passable for the early 2000s. Um, it doesn't say, it doesn't have the copyright date on here, but I know this was around, I believe, around 2003 or, two, uh, 2003 or 2004 this, th that this was released. Um, uh, yeah, there's no copyright date. Um, oh, well, there's a booklet, though. I don't think I've ever looked at the booklet. Well, it's not a booklet, it's just a little pamphlet. Yeah, there's no copyright date, but... I'm pretty sure it was around 2003, 2004. Anyway, um, a really, really good um, horror film. Um, really interesting plot twist, too. I'm not going to spoil it, of course, but a really cool plot twist. Um, the action scenes are really good. The horror scenes are really good. Combines those two really, really well. The acting's uh, decent, but, I mean, if you're going to go... Looking for a, a horror film about the Loch Ness Monster, it definitely, uh, these two are definitely the ones to, uh, uh watch. Um, anyway. Alright. Hold on. Give me a second. Might have mixed up the pile. <laughs> Oh, no, there we go. Anyway, sorry, I thought I mixed up the pile, but uh, luckily it wasn't scattered. 
All right. Um, number five is the remake of The Wolfman from uh, 2009. Oh, yeah, it was 2009. Um, I mean, unpopular opinion, uh, but I don't think the original Wolfman was that good. Like, you know, Lon Chaney was good as, as the uh, human guy, but I don't know. Everything else about the movie, from the... Other actor, it's the other actors very over overacting. Hold on, to um, to just a really really terrible werewolf uh 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 design, to just the I don't know the movie overall the original the original one just is not that good did not hold up whatsoever. But this remake, this remake took the idea of the original film and made it good. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong with Anthony Hopkins. He always plays a really good villain. Um, and then the main protagonist, yeah, the main protagonist, uh, uh by, uh, Ben Chewy, Ben, Ben Ikui, I don't know, someone to someone, I don't know. But, like, the main, the guy who plays the main character, I mean, he's decent, but, like, he does get overshadowed by Anthony Hopkins, unfortunately. Um... But yeah, I'll, a lot of the acting gets overshadowed by Anthony Hopkins, but, you know, it's Anthony Hopkins. Um, but yeah, just a really, really, really good horror film, and one of the best remakes out there. Um, alright. Um, number five? Hold on. Yeah, I was on six. I'm pretty sure I uh, said that one was five, but th this one's five. I might have messed up there. Um. Anyway, at number five is Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, it's sort of a horror comedy, but I mean, it's still horror, so I put it with the uh, top ten. Um, out of the trilogy of um Cornetto trilogy, this is definitely my favorite. Um. I I do like World's End. I've seen like bits and pieces of Hot Fuzz. Didn't really like it all that much. Uh, World's End though, I actually love, and then this one I love. Um, but uh, yeah, just I mean, of course, Sean, the main character, is hilarious and played by the hilarious Simon Pegg, and of course, his his friend played by the hilarious Nick Frost, one of the best comedy duos duos ever. Um, and of course, oh yeah, um, who's in this, uh, Bill Knight, the guy who played, uh, uh, Davy Jones, and then the bad guy from the first Underworld film is also in this. Um, but yeah, just a really, really good horror comedy. Absolutely love it. Alright. Number four. Number four is Van Helsing, from 2003, I think. Uh, no, 2004. I was close, but yeah, 2004. Of course, starring um, Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale, who would go on to... or No, it was 2004. The Underworld movies... The first Underworld film was 2003, so this is right after the first Underworld film. Um, but yeah, just a really great film. Yeah, it's cheesy and over-the-top, but it's meant to be that way. It's purposely cheesy and over-the-top. It's not supposed to be taken super seriously. Um, but for what it is, it's still really, really good. Very entertaining. The monster designs are really, really cool. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome film. All right. Number three. Speaking of Underworld, I just mentioned Underworld. Number three is the first Underworld film. Um, yeah, I mean, <sighs> the other one, one of the other sequels, Underworld Evolution, is my favorite but out of all of them, this uh, this is the best. Like my fr my, there's a difference between the best, a best movie of something, and my favorite movie of something. They're not always the same. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the best. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, also, I guess like 
once in a while, I do consider this my favorite as well. I know it flip-flops, too, so, like, sometimes I'll flip-flop between what I think is the best and what I think is the favorite. Both both of those flip-flop from time to time. Sometimes I think this is my, my favorite, sometimes I think Underworld Evolution is my favorite, sometimes this is, I think this is the best, but sometimes I think Underworld... I, you know, it just flip-flops, because they're so... Both, both Underworld films are just amazing. Anyway... Um, at this point in time, I think this one's, my, uh, this one's definitely my favorite. Um, but, uh, yeah, just a really great film. Great sort of werewolf versus vampire film. Um, the CGI that's in this film has held up very, very, very well. Um, the practical effects are awesome. Uh, the design of the werewolves is not the best in this film, but still really good. Um, and of course, uh, Kate Beckinsale as Celine is... The uh, portrayal of this character is awesome. Um, but yeah. Alright, number two. Number two is a very underrated and sort of unknown film, for the most part. The Haunting in Connecticut. Um, definitely, um, from this time period, from the 2000, like, two, around 2009-10, it's kind of when like horror movies started going downhill for a while, for actually quite a quite a while. Like I'd say the next like three or four years. Um, but this movie is awesome. Uh, it does not sort of like unlike a lot of movies, especially again uh, last few, couple of years. A lot of, unlike a lot of horror movies nowadays, this one uh, doesn't rely on jump scares after like jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. And the jumps, there's not, technically, there's not really jump scares in this film. There's some, there's some shocking, surprising moments, but they're not really jump scares, technically speaking. And even with the shocking moments, they're put, uh, they're implemented very well into the movie and the story going on at that point, you know. Um, the acting's really, really good. Uh, this movie is, for a PG-13 film, it's... It, it handles, uh, uh, it actually, uh, handles the rating very well in terms of what they're able to pull off for a PG-13 film. Um, but yeah, just a, a, and one of the scariest PG-13 horror films, too. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome film. It's at number two. Alright. Number one, my favorite horror film from the 2000s is The Lost Boys, The Thirst. And actually, it's actually my favorite Lost Boys film. I've said this in the last video, but it's my favorite Lost Boys film. Um, of all the Lost Boys films, I think this is just, this one is definitely, I don't know, it's just... It's just the best in terms of the feel, overall feel, and overall acting. I mean, not, I mean, I don't know, overall acting, but, like, for the most part, the acting's really good. Corey Feldman, like, him as Edgar, Edgar Fogg is definitely, his character has developed over the, over the trilogy of films. Um, but, uh, yeah, just the, probably the pinnacle of the portrayal of Edgar Fogg in this film. He's the most badass he's been in the entire trilogy. Um, just a, some really cool action scenes. Uh, the vampires are pretty terrifying in this one. Um, but yeah, really, really, really cool horror film. It's at number one. Alright, so that's it for this video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.